Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when standing before Pilate, kept silent at all the unjust accusations and slanders of the Jews, and as a gentle lamb that did not open its mouth, did not con contradict them when they brought forward their charges against you. Give me grace never to be disturbed by the false accusations of others, but may I overcome every injury by silence and meekness. Give me the grace of perfect humility, so that I may never desire praise nor refuse any measure of contempt. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, you, Lamb without spot, against whom the pious Pharisees and scribes raged with obstinate hatred. For although Pilate testified that he found no cause of death in you, yet they would not be satisfied with anything except your death. Grant me grace to imitate your innocence and patience, that I may both lead a godly life, and for so doing, if I am spoken of evilly, that I may remain at rest in you, giving way to no indignation, but giving thanks to you in all adversity. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who were led in great, the greatest of indignity, in the manner of a wicked criminal through the middle of the city, from one judgment seat to another, and from Pilate to Herod and back again amidst the noise and shouts of the people. Give me grace never to be overcome by the injuries of my enemies, nor to be exasperated by slander. May I never feel any false shame at being despised, but may I receive everything in meekness and endure all things in silence for your honour, that, by the assistance of your grace, I may in patience possess my soul. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when Herod asked you many vain and foolish questions, and when you were falsely wounded in different ways by priest and scribe, humbly kept a meet and becoming silence. Give me grace to restrain my tongue in a manner well-pleasing to you. Do not permit me to utter hurtful words. Do not permit me to be taken up with fruitless stories but give me grace to say what is right, profitable and honest, according to your will. May I abhor the, the sin of evil speaking, and be always glad to think and speak well of any man. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who condemned by your silence the foolish curiosity of Herod, and who would not gratify his curious eyes by the performance of any miracle, because he did not have his own salvation at heart, and did there, there in this way teach us to avoid all ostentation before the great ones of this world. Pour into my heart a spirit of deep humility, mortify and quench within me any desire for vain glory. Grant that I may never do anything in order to gain praise of man, but may always act with a single eye, upon the glory of your most holy name, and may come before you day by day in a true spirit of humility and meekness. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who didn't refuse to be set to nothing by Herod and his men of war, nor to be clothed in a white garment and to be mocked and laughed at as though a fool and a madman. Give me grace, O Lord, to choose rather to be an outcast with you than to be glorious in the world. May I think it better and more honourable to suffer reproach for your name than to prosper in the vain honours of the world. Give me grace that, truly acknowledging my own sins and my own unworthiness, I may be as nothing in my own sight, but may always despise and accuse myself and daily lament over my own weakness and wretchedness. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who was sent back with shame, clothed in a fool's garment from Herod the Pilate, and in all things obeyed your enemies going backwards and forwards according to their pleasure. 
Grant that I may not shrink from being despised, nor refuse obedience even to those who wish nothing but bad for me. Give me grace to have no feeling for the things of this world, but to think of and care for and love you alone. May you alone be my honour, my delight, my love, my glory, and my joy. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will sing your praise.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb four days already. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, so many of the Jewish people of the region had come to Martha and Mary to console them over the loss of their brother. And so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will grant you. Jesus replied, Your brother will come back to life again. Martha said, I know he will come back to life again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies, and the one who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who comes into the world. When she had said this, Martha went and called her sister Mary, saying privately, The teacher is here and is asking for you. So when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had come out to meet him. Then the people who were with Mary in the house, consoling her, saw her get up quickly and go out. They followed her, because they thought... She was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the people who had come with her weeping, he was intensely moved in spirit and greatly distressed. He asked her, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And thus the people who had come to mourn said, Look how much he loved him. But some of them said, This is the man who caused the blind man to see. Couldn't he have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? Jesus, intensely moved again, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was placed across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. But Martha, the sister of the deceased, replied, Lord, by this time the body will have a bad smell, because he has been buried four days. Jesus replied, Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God. And so they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that you have listened to me. I know that you always listen to me, but I said this for the sake of the crowd standing around here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he shouted in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! 
the one who had died came out, his feet and hands bound up with strips of cloth, with a cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. Then many of the people who had come with Mary and had seen the things that Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and reported to them what Jesus had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Jews wanted a sign, and so here it was. The resurrection of Jesus could not have been clearer proof of the authority of Jesus or his mission, and yet we are told at the end of the reading, some still refused to accept what they had seen, and went off to plot against Jesus. The miracle was, however, more for the benefit of the disciples, to give them the strength and reassurance they would need for what was to lie ahead over the coming weeks, to affirm them in their faith, even though there would be momentary periods of crisis. After his own resurrection, Jesus would go on to tell Thomas that those who believe, even though they have not seen with their own eyes, will be especially blessed. Of the two sisters, we remember that Mary was the one of action, the one who believed in getting on and getting things done, and in speaking her mind, while Mary was the one given to quiet prayer and thoughtfulness. Despite sending word to Jesus that their brother was seriously ill, Jesus had not come, and so Lazarus had died and had been buried. The house now was busy with friends and relatives who had come from all over the region to pay their respects to the two sisters, and no doubt they were well occupied with all the hospitality. Nevertheless, Martha was driven. The moment she heard that Jesus was finally coming, she could not contain herself and went down the road to intercept him. There would surely have been some mixed emotions within her at this point, not least a little anger and frustration with Jesus. It is perhaps telling that the first thing that we are told of is that she said an implied rebuke for his tardiness. If you had been here, Lazarus, our brother and your friend, would not have died. Then we might think almost as a form of afterthought. She qualified it by saying that he had it in his power to do whatever he wanted. When Jesus replied that Lazarus would come back to life, it is quite clear that Martha truly believed this, but only that he would come back to life on Judgment Day. She did not expect Lazarus to come out of the grave and return to the house, and that life would continue as before. Jesus then directly challenged her faith as a precursor to what would happen next. Then we have the beautiful confession of faith from Martha that should be on all our lips all of the time. Is this a statement that we can all say in complete sincerity and adoration? Yes, Lord, you are the Christ, God's only Son, who came into the world to save us and all men. We truly love you and believe in you always and in all things. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given us, your servants, grace, by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity, we beseech you that you keep us steadfast in this faith, and evermore defend us from all adversities, who lives and reigns, one God world without end. Amen.